Hello Immortal News family, and welcome back to our channel. In the last 24 hours we have received the somber news of the passing of extraordinary talents, and today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Before we start, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Number 4. Glynis Johns, a legendary figure in the world of cinema, known for her iconic role as Mrs. Winifred Banks in the 1964 classic Mary Poppins, has passed away at the age of 100. A remarkable milestone in itself, her centennial life was a journey through the golden era of film, leaving behind a legacy of unforgettable performances. Her career was marked by versatility and a sparkling presence that captivated audiences worldwide. A decade before her memorable performance in Mary Poppins, she graced the screen in another Disney movie, The Sword and the Rose. Her association with Disney led to her being named a Disney legend in 1998, holding the title of the oldest living Disney legend until her passing. Additionally, she was celebrated as the oldest living Oscar nominee for her outstanding work in the 1960 film, The Sundowners. Her talent wasn't confined to the silver screen. John's also shone brightly on Broadway, winning a Tony Award for A Little Night Music. Her rendition of Stephen Sondheim's Send in the Clowns in the Musical is still remembered for its emotional depth and artistic brilliance. Reflecting on her illustrious career in an interview celebrating her 100th birthday, John's expressed her love and passion for her craft, cherishing the applause and the joy it brought her. Her final roles in while You Were Sleeping and Superstar marked the end of an era of a distinguished actress whose career spanned several decades. Glynis Johns was not just an actress. She was an embodiment of grace, talent, and perseverance. Her contributions to film and theater have inspired generations of actors and actresses. Her legacy lives on in the timeless characters she portrayed, each one a testament to her extraordinary talent. Tribute to Glynis Johns Number 3. Adora Adamora, a trailblazing American doctor and academic, passed away on January 1st at the age of 67. Her illustrious career as the Sarah Graham Kennan Distinguished Professor of Medicine and Professor of Epidemiology at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine leaves a lasting legacy in the field of public health, particularly in the study of HIV and sexually transmitted infections among minority populations. Born and raised in Manhattan, Dr. Adamora was inspired by her parents, her mother a nurse administrator, and her father a physician. She pursued her education at Cornell University and Yale University School of Medicine, initially drawn to psychiatry before choosing to specialize in infectious diseases. Her dedication to this field was evident in her work at Harlem Hospital Center's Division of Infectious Diseases and her fellowship at Montfiore Medical Center, Albert Einstein College of Medicine. Her research was groundbreaking, focusing on the transmission patterns of HIV-AIDS among heterosexual African Americans. She highlighted the significant impact of social and economic factors in the spread of HIV, emphasizing the need for structural interventions to mitigate risk. Her work was recognized nationally in 2019 when she was elected to the National Academy of Medicine, a testament to her significant contributions to medicine and public health. As a clinical assistant professor of medicine at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, Dr. Adamora became a role model and pioneer, being the first black woman in the university's infectious diseases division to receive tenure. Her leadership roles extended to serving as the principal investigator for the UNC site of the Women's Interagency HIV Study and as a member of the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS. Her commitment to public health was also evident in her advocacy against unfair drug pricing, particularly during the Dara Prim pricing controversy. Her voice was a powerful one in the fight for equitable healthcare access, especially for vulnerable populations. 
tribute to Dr. Adeora Adamora. Number 2. Bernie Fagan, an English professional footballer known for his robust playing career as a defender and later as a respected coach, passed away on January 2nd at the age of 74. Fagan's journey in football, which spanned continents and decades, left a lasting impact on the game, especially in the United States where he spent the majority of his career. Born in Sunderland, Fagan's early promise was evident in his hometown club's youth team. He made his professional debut in 1969 with Northampton Town, showcasing his talent in English football. His move to non-league football with Scarborough marked a transitional phase before he embarked on a new adventure in the United States in 1974. Joining the Seattle Sounders of the North American Soccer League marked the beginning of a significant chapter in his career. Fagan's time in the United States was marked by versatility and adaptability playing for several teams including the Los Angeles Aztecs, the Los Angeles Skyhawks, the Colorado Caribous, and the Southern California Lasers. He also had a stint with the Detroit Lightning of the Major Indoor Soccer League before concluding his playing career with the Portland Timbers of the NASL. Transitioning into coaching, Fagan continued to influence the game. His tenure as the coach of FC Portland in the Western Soccer Alliance and his role at Warner Pacific College along with the Bernie Fagan soccer camps, demonstrated his commitment to nurturing new talent and contributing to the growth of soccer in the United States. His legacy in the world of football, both as a player and coach, will be remembered for the passion, skill, and dedication he brought to the sport. Tribute to Bernie Fagan. Today's top headlines. News 1. In a solemn announcement, the media world mourns the loss of Janet DeLorenzo, a distinguished veteran in daily syndicated television. DeLorenzo, age 63, passed away on December 30th, leaving behind a remarkable career spanning over three decades. The specifics of her passing, including the cause and location, remain undisclosed. Her journey in television began as an intern at the ABC affiliate WLS in Chicago during the inception of The Oprah Winfrey Show. Her dedication and talent quickly shone through as she ascended through various roles at Harpo Productions, ultimately serving as senior manager of affiliate relations for 21 years. Her influence in the industry was further solidified through her pivotal roles in launching and managing shows like NBCU Endemol's Steve Harvey Daytime Show and Pickler and Ben. Most recently, DeLorenzo contributed her expertise to the Tamron Hall Show as Director of Affiliate Marketing. Her legacy in television is marked by her passion, commitment, and the profound impact she had on her colleagues and the industry at large. DeLorenzo's memory is cherished by her children, Jack and Chloe, her mother Patricia, and her siblings Pam, John, and Tom. She was predeceased by her father George and Peter, the father of her children. In her memory, the family has initiated a GoFundMe campaign to support her children, encapsulating the love and legacy Janet DeLorenzo leaves behind. News 2 The Cedar Rapids community is mourning the loss of Jim Dostal, a former longtime football coach and revered figure in the local sports scene who passed away at the age of 59. Dostal, known for his impactful coaching and mentoring, leaves behind a legacy that transcends the football field. His journey in football was remarkable, highlighted by his role in leading Cedar Rapids Jefferson to the Class 4A playoff semifinals in 1992. His career spanned various roles, including a long tenure as an assistant coach at Jefferson Cedar Rapids Prairie and Coe College. At Coe College, he shined as an All-America linebacker and later became a beloved member of the Coe Athletics Hall of Fame. His collaboration with Mark Bliss, head coach at Cedar Rapids Prairie High School, was a testament to their shared passion for the game and their deep friendship. Bliss, who came to Prairie in 2015, 
often credited Dostal for influencing his decision, with the two forming a formidable coaching duo. Dostal's impact extended beyond coaching. As a dedicated instructor at Jefferson, he touched the lives of countless students, leaving a lasting impression on the community. His integrity, compassion, and commitment to helping others are fondly remembered by those who knew him, including Bliss, who regarded him as a brother. The community remembers Dostal not just for his coaching achievements, but for the thousands of lives he impacted as a teacher and mentor. News 3 The film industry bids farewell to Ernst Goldschmidt, the esteemed co-founder of Orion Pictures and a pivotal figure in the distribution of some of the most iconic movies of the last century. Goldschmidt, age 92, passed away due to heart failure in his hometown of Baden-Weller, Germany. Beginning his illustrious career in 1957 with MGM in Zurich, Goldschmidt's journey in the film industry was marked by significant milestones. He joined United Artists in 1958, rapidly ascending to pivotal roles, including president of UA Europe. In New York, as vice president international sales, he played a crucial role in distributing films from renowned directors and actors, overseeing international distribution of monumental franchises like James Bond, and classics such as The Graduate and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. In 1975, Goldschmidt ventured into new territory, co-founding Orion Pictures. As chairman of International, he was instrumental in Orion's success, contributing to the release of influential films including Woody Allen's works, Terminator, and Platoon. Orion's remarkable journey under his leadership was crowned with four Best Picture Academy Awards. Goldschmidt's passion for cinema led him to establish Sovereign Pictures in 1988 and later joined Pandora Cinema in Paris, where he oversaw distribution of Oscar-winning films Shine and Kolya. His legacy is cherished by his wife Marie Therese, first wife Renee, their children Patrick and Deborah, and several grandchildren. Goldschmidt's contribution to the film industry remains a testament to his vision and dedication, leaving a huge mark on the world of cinema. News 4 the legal community mourns the loss of a distinguished figure, 15th District Circuit Judge Claiborne Buddy McDonald IV, who passed away at 75 in Forest General Hospital. Known for his empathetic yet firm adherence to the law, Judge McDonald's legacy is marked by fairness, compassion, and unwavering commitment to justice. Starting his judicial service in January 2016 in a newly created position, McDonald's role was pivotal in managing the growing caseload in the district, serving Lamar, Marion, Pearl River, Jefferson Davis, and Lawrence Counties. His career in public service was extensive, including roles as district attorney, assistant district attorney, and other positions in Pearl River County and Picayune. Colleagues like Anthony Mozingo and district attorney Hal Kittrell speak highly of McDonald, reflecting on his impressive intellect, mentorship, and natural litigation skills. Kittrell credits McDonald as a key mentor in shaping his career. McDonald's dedication wasn't confined to the courtroom. He was a man of solid integrity and a reliable servant of the public, as noted by Supreme Court presiding Justice Jim Kitchens. Mississippi Court of Appeals Presiding Judge Virginia C. Carlton, a longtime family friend and former assistant district attorney under McDonald, recalls him as a great mentor committed to justice. News 5 in an uplifting update, actor Cameron Matheson shared his triumphant health status with Entertainment Tonight, marking four years since his successful treatment for kidney cancer. Matheson, known for his roles in Hallmark and Great American Family movies, revealed he remains not only cancer-free, but also in the best shape of his life. At the 50th annual Daytime Emmy Awards, Matheson expressed his joy and gratitude, stating, I'm doing great. I had my four-year cancer checkup, so I'm healthy, cancer-free doing great. I'm stronger than I've ever been. I've got more energy than I've ever been. I worked really hard at it. Since his diagnosis, Matheson has embraced a holistic approach to health, incorporating cleaner eating habits, regular workouts, and a deepened meditation practice. He credits his rejuvenated lifestyle, including challenging ice baths, for his current well-being. His journey began in 2019 when he announced his diagnosis on the Home and Family talk show. Despite the challenge, he underwent successful, minimally invasive surgery, maintaining 80% of his right kidney. His proactive approach and healthy lifestyle played a critical role in his recovery. A new six. Don Reed, a renowned American college football coach and athletics administrator, 
passed away at the age of 90 on January 3rd. Known for his significant contributions to college football, Reed's coaching career spanned several institutions and yielded a record of 155 wins, 126 losses, and one tie. Reed's coaching journey began at Portland State University, where he led the Vikings from 1968 to 1971, and again from 1981 to 1985, achieving a 39-52-1 record. His tenure at the University of Oregon from 1974 to 1976 resulted in a 9-24 record, during which he played a key role in developing quarterbacks and receivers. However, it was at the University of Montana where Red found his greatest success. From 1986 to 1995, he guided the team to an impressive 85 36 record, highlighted by three 11 win seasons and culminating in an NCAA Division IAA championship in 1995, his final year of coaching. News 7 Brian Ansel, a pivotal figure in the world of role playing and war game design, passed away on December 30th at the age of 68. Ansel, a British national, was renowned for his influential role as the managing director of Games Workshop, which he bought from Steve Jackson and Ian Livingstone in 1985. Ansel's career in gaming and miniature design began with the founding of Asgard Miniatures and his work on the fanzine Troll Crusher. His partnership with Games Workshop in 1978 led to the creation of Citadel Miniatures, a pivotal move in the gaming industry. He co-designed the seminal Warhammer Fantasy Battle alongside Rick Priestley and Richard Halliwell, playing a crucial role in the Warhammer boom of the mid to late 1980s. Ansel's tenure at Games Workshop was marked by significant changes, including a management buyout in December 1991 that shifted the company's focus to the highly successful Warhammer Fantasy Battle and Warhammer 40,000 miniature wargames. Later, he left Games Workshop to focus on Wargames Foundry, a company specializing in historical miniatures. News 8. Mick Weeble, a renowned British racing manager, marketing executive, author and charity advocate, passed away on December 30th due to complications from esophageal cancer. His impactful career spanned several decades in the Greyhound racing industry. Weeble notably served as a Greyhound Board of Great Britain, licensed racing manager at prominent stadiums, including Leicester Stadium and Coventry Stadium, before ascending to the role of racing manager at Oxford Stadium in the mid-80s. Weeble's significant contributions to the industry included securing the first bookmaker's afternoon Greyhound service contracts for Oxford and Ramsgate stadiums. His strategic leadership and expertise propelled him to the position of group racing manager, where he continued to influence the sport positively. News 9. Maunu Kirkvara, a pioneering Finnish film director and screenwriter, passed away on December 31st at the age of 97. Widely regarded as the initiator of the new wave in Finnish cinema, Inspired by the French New Wave, Kirkvara's influential career spanned several decades, leaving a memorable mark on the industry. Kirkvara directed 22 films between 1955 and 1993, often incorporating a nautical theme, a reflection of his love for the sea. His notable film, Ixitis Aluo, gained international recognition, being entered into the 13th Berlin International Film Festival. Furthermore, his co-produced film, 4X4, was showcased at the 4th Moscow International Film Festival in 1965. His journey in the film industry began in the late 1940s, initially studying painting before transitioning to filmmaking. Kirkvara's unique auteur style was characterized by his hands-on approach, often undertaking multiple roles in his film projects, including designing, producing, writing, directing, shooting, and editing. News 10 Major Mike Sadler, a celebrated World War II hero and the last surviving original member of the elite Special Air Service Regiment, has passed away at the age of 103. Renowned for his remarkable bravery and skill, Sadler was a key figure in pivotal wartime operations against the Nazis, earning the military cross for his exceptional service. Sadler's distinguished military career began with the Long Range Desert Group, where he served as first navigator. His exceptional skills caught the attention of David Sterling, the founder of the SAS, leading to his recruitment into this elite unit. Within the SAS, Sadler continued to excel as a navigator, 
mastering the art of guiding troops through the featureless North African desert by starlight. His contributions were crucial in the fight against Field Marshal Erwin Rommel, famously known as the Desert Fox, during the North Africa campaign. The campaign was a critical front in the war as the Nazis attempted to seize Egypt and control the strategic Suez Canal, a vital link between Britain and its colonies in India and Asia. Number 1. Denise Sanson, a multi-talented Brazilian artist known for her work as an actress, singer, and composer, passed away at the age of 67. According to a statement from the Instituto Itamara Sanson, she died on the morning of January 4th, following complications from intestinal cancer at the Hospital das Clínicas de São Paulo. Asensão was a prominent figure in the Brazilian art scene, known for her dynamic performances in the shows of Banda Isca de Polícia, led by her brother Itamar Asensão, a key exponent of the Vanguarda Paulista movement that shaped the alternative scene in Sao Paulo during the 1980s. Her contributions to the band showcased her exceptional musical talent and deep understanding of the genre. Besides her musical career, Asunção also had a solid career as an actress. She shone in television, particularly in the acclaimed miniseries Oje e Dia de Maria on TV Globo. Her filmography included roles in movies by Mazzaropi and performances in the renowned Teatro Oficina, founded by Zé Celso. Her artistry was not only a demonstration of her immense talent, but also a powerful expression of her identity as a black artist in Brazil. The statement from the Institute described her as embodying dignity and ancestry. A Sun Sun was known for her commanding presence, remarkable clarity of thought, limitless talent, and her firm and unconventional stance in demanding respect and reparations. Her life and work were testaments to what it means to be a black artist in Brazil. Denise Sun Sun leaves behind legacy and an unwavering faith in the power of art. Tribute to Denise Sun Sun.